you so much. Thank you very much, everybody. Are we well? Yes, good, good, good. I'm well myself. You, you know, your previous act, Tom, he was telling a story about, uh, about having to kiss someone they didn't want to kiss. And uh, I've had that. I, uh, I made out with a heckler one time. So, you know, fair warning, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'll come at you. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is the story. It was basically at a show. There were, like, two guys in the front row that were, like, chatting the entire time. And, like, when I got up on stage, I was like, I know the perfect line that's going to take him down, and I said, hey, if you keep moving those lips around, I'm going to come down there and give him a big kiss, which is not the perfect line. <laughs> but it was hilarious because the guy responded in the craziest way. He was basically like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm being heckled by Jabba the Hutt. Good to know. <laughs> so, so basically, but he like challenged me on it, right? So like, you can't back down, so I'm like getting closer and closer, and I'm getting closer and closer <laughs> to this to this guy, and it's fantastic because we're playing gay chicken. <laughs> and what he doesn't realize at this point is that I'm gay and <laughs> very brave. <laughs> so we make out, and then we pop out of it. And, like, I try and launch into material, but this happened, like, at the top of the show, so it was way too crazy. I was trying to do material, nothing's working, so I mess around with that guy a bit more, and I try and do material, nothing works, I mess around with that Long story short, I fucked that dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's it. If you ever want to shut down a, a heckler, you guys, give him chlamydia. <laughs> It'll do it. <laughs> um, aside from being gay... Also, get this, polyamorous. Yeah, nobody knows what that means. <laughs> so we can break it down for you guys. You've got poly, meaning many. And you've got amory, meaning dicks in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I keep telling people I'm polyamorous. I'm literally just trying not to tell my mom I'm a tart. <laughs> yeah. And it's great, but like, here's the thing: like, I don't feel like I sleep around with just anybody, you know. Like, I'm not, I, I'm not a slut. I'm not easy. Like, what I do is I like make friends with people, and then I have sex with my friends. So maybe I'm just a really good friend, <laughs> you know. I'm like the genie from Aladdin. If he was gay and all he did was bone Aladdin, <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. Being polyamorous is, is like watching an Avengers movie because you get all your characters at the same time, you know. And it's fantastic. You've got, like, Iron Man, you know, hot, yeah. <laughs> Captain America, love it. Black Widow, we'll find something for her to do. <laughs> she can hold a camera. <laughs> um, I'm also from Canada. I'm, I'm, I'm a Canadian, and uh, when I was back home for the summer, I went back to my very, very, very small town of 3,000 people in Redneck, Canada, and I went on the, the, the grinder while I was there, which is the gay dating app, and it was weird. Don't do that. It was just <laughs> nothing but repressed gay men who loved talking about how masculine they were. You know, they'd just be like, yeah, I'm gay, but I'm also masculine. Such a masculine gay. I love two things, men and welding. <laughs> also, a guy in jeans riding a horse. <laughs> And it better be a boy horse. Don't come in here with no feminine horse. That horse better be learning a trade. <laughs> but it's, it's so weird. Like, and it, I, I found it so spooky because I almost like ended up living in that town. And when I was there, you guys, the dating scene was myself and three weirdos. And... <laughs> I am very convinced that if I stuck around, it would have eventually just been four weirdos. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Like, your environment, it, it shapes you, you know? Like, I remember when I was from a... Is anybody here from a small town? Do you cheer from a small place? Yes. How many people live in your town? Uh, that person. I didn't actually get it. Okay, one person give me a cheer to live in a small town. Okay, you. How many people... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this one at a time. 
my friend, how many people live in your town? 4,000. That's you know, I, not to brag, but I come from a town of 3,000, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> But this is the thing, like, I found these really weird reasons to brag. Like, I'd be like, oh, I'm from a town of 3,000. It's so cool. You know, it's kind of the place where you learn the names of your neighbors, you know? And you do, because there's nothing else to do. You have to. You're like, well, I can either kill myself or go meet Gary. (laughs) (laughs) But this is the thing. You can't win at that game, because there's always someone from a smaller town. Like, what happened tonight? So, you know, I'd be like, oh, I'm from a town of 3,000. And someone would be like, well... What a sprawling metropolis. (laughs) I come from a town of 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we had growing up was a railroad that didn't run anymore and a gas station that was also a post office that was also a Jeep. (laughs) Yeah. And someone's like, oh, 300. Well, la-di-da, you high lord. I live in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My best friend is a raven I call Patches, and neither of us trust the government. (laughs) And someone's like, ooh, the woods. I come from a ceaseless void (laughs) where time is an illusion and change is non-existent. And you say, man, Wigan is not that bad. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I, uh, I got a new job. I'm working in a, in a corporate office for, a, it's an online rental car company. And it's, it's, really, it's really weird. I've never worked in, like, a corporate environment before, you guys. And, and they, do, they make you do weird things. They make you, they make you go to, like, tr- ethics training days. Have you ever been to an ethics training day? Oh, my God. I went to one, and they were like, okay, guys, we're going to role play. We're going to do a little role play here, see how you respond, all right? Okay, role play time. All right, so you're on a, you're on a business trip to Amsterdam, and your line manager wants you to head down to the local coffee shop and, <laughs> you know, partake in the local <laughs> delicacies. And I was like, are we getting high? <laughs> but they were like, so your line manager wants you to go, you know, have some fun, but you're, it's a business trip, and, uh, and uh, what do you do? And I was like, well, it depends. Am I still cool? Because <laughs> I'm getting high. <laughs> and then it was so weird, because, like, so we're doing this thing, and, like, one of the people in, like, our little training session thing were like, well, our group had the idea that maybe the line manager on the trip was, was testing us. It was a trap to see how we would respond. And the guy teaching the class was like, that's very smart. You never know when someone might be laying a trap. I was like, what the fuck are you on about? <laughs> you know who shouldn't smoke weed in Amsterdam? You, you're paranoid. <laughs> you think everyone's trying to trap you. <laughs> and also, it's like, what, what, what world does that happen in? Where your line manager is like testing your moral caliber like he's that kung fu master from Kill Bill. <laughs> Where he's like, ooh, I told you to leave, but you stayed outside in the rain for seven days and seven nights. I guess you can be a sales associate. <laughs> <laughs> so nuts. Oh, okay, and I get this, too. So this happened, like, about a week ago. We, they, it's like a big company, so they had us all, like, meet up in, like, this auditorium, and they did, like, the company overview where the, 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 the main company guys – I'm not good at business, you guys – the, the – <laughs> Like, so the bosses come down, and they, like, give you a presentation of what the company did and where they're going forward and all that fucking nonsense. And they were so fucking full of themselves. Like, no lie, the, the, the main guy was like, all right, guys, look, I know we're just a rental car company, okay? But our customers have bad customer experiences. And if we, as a company, can improve those customer experiences... We can change the world. It's like, whoa, no, whoa, whoa. Don't sell yourself short. Keep going. Change? I'd say fix. <laughs> like, like, this rental car company makes me want to dig up the guy who fucking invented penicillin so I can tell him what a pathetic failure he is. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you came up with antibiotics, but did you improve my Aunt Helen's Barbados trip forgettably? Okay, that was a new bit. That's not bad. 
this is another dumb thing I thought of. Do you guys know, I, you know when you have a platonic friend, like you have a friend that's platonic? Do you know that's referring to Plato? Famous philosopher and good friend. <laughs> I like, this is the idea I have with Plato. It was like, it's, I, I imagine he just got in friend zone so much that they just named it after him. <laughs> Where he'd be like, I really want to date you. He's like, no, we should just keep this platonic. He's like, why me? It's like, how much philosophy do I have to write to get my dick wet? <sighs> okay, that one doesn't have jam. <laughs> uh, this is my new favorite bit. Okay, uh, so I consider myself a pretty good person. I like to do good person things, like if... Uh, you know, I'm getting on a train in the morning, and there's a lot of people getting on the train, and there's one person still trying to get off the train. I'll speak up, and I will, like, I don't just, like, let people know that someone's trying to get off. I try and shame the entire train. <laughs> you know, I'm not like, oh, someone's trying to get off the sh train. I'll be like, a man is trying to get off the train. <laughs> and you would have seen it if you weren't blinded by greed. <laughs> Maybe, maybe if you looked up from your phones once in a while and looked in the mirror, you'd see what a fucking monster you've become. <laughs> and then it doesn't end there. Like, I get on that thing. I start walking that room like I just got fired from the train and I've hated everyone for years. I'm like, and you, sitting while a pregnant woman stands. <laughs> she is standing for two and you are sitting for you. <laughs> so what are you going to do? <laughs> She's got the future of the world in her belly, and all that's in your belly is a sausage roll from Greg's. <laughs> do you know what my least favorite bad train behavior is? It's when someone is listening to music on their phone, but they have not, they're not using their headphones. <laughs> it's like, I'm just like, what the fuck are you thinking? You know what I mean? What, what is your thought process? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what this hot, crowded stress box needs? A Turkish DJ. <laughs> yeah. Maybe all these pissed off British people get happy when I play them the craziest flute solo they ever heard. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I am a big fan of dick pics. I don't know if you guys like dick pics. <laughs> Yeah, let's take this bus and go this way. <laughs> I love dick pics. I have, <laughs> I have my own favorite subgenre of dick pics. And it's the one where someone puts an item next to it to give it a sense of scale. <laughs> How great is that? I... And here's a fun fact, you guys. If it's a really big dick, if it's a really big dick, what they'll do is they'll put a remote control next to it, <laughs> which is great because it tells you, one, how big the dick is, and two, how little respect they have for the people they live with. <laughs> They're like, yeah, this is my dick next to the remote. This is my dick next to the handle of the refrigerator. <laughs> This is just somebody's toothbrush, and that's Mark's face. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm out of time, but you're lovely. Love you lots. Goodbye.